we are going to dive into a topic today that I am so passionate about. And I know that if you take this by the horns and you run with it, you will see progress and you will see growth. And this was actually a revelation that I had years ago when I heard a mentor of mine speaking um, and teaching. And so we're going to dive in today uh, around the topic of don't eat your seed. Here I am sitting in a hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> I was at family camp in North Carolina yesterday, drove two hours to get to the Knoxville airport, left the boys and Nathan there at camp and got on an airplane and flew nine hours, just travel time and everything across the country to be at this cosmetic and pa packaging supply expo for one day. And so I was here for a day. I get back on a plane tomorrow, fly back to Knoxville, drive through the mountains again for a couple hours to get back to family camp. And it just got me thinking about paying the price. And so what I'm going to share with you is going to help you get strategic breakthrough, but also spiritual breakthrough. And if you're, you know, if you're just getting started, this is going to propel you forward into the stratosphere. My goal is that when you listen to these, to, to this podcast, that you would have spiritual breakthrough, that you would have financial breakthrough and wisdom and an internal, internal breakthrough to such a point where if you're at zero, you're going to be at six figures. If you're at six figures, you're going to be at seven figures, wherever you're at, you can guarantee that if you implement these principles that I'm teaching you, you will continue to grow. And remember, Growth is not for everyone else out there except for you. Growth is yours for the taking. And you don't have to be a special kind of person. You don't have to have a special kind of background. You don't have to have special, um, you know, a special upbringing or even any kind of special <laughs> intellect. Success is yours for the taking. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And so my question for you today is, are you sowing? Because we're guaranteed in the covenant that if we sow seeds, we will reap. And so I'm going to talk today about what that looks like and what seeds actually are, how to consider the soil. And part of this too is your willingness to pay the price and to count the cost. And back early on in 2010, when I started our business, there was no lack of hunger. And I still, to this day, 13 years later, have so much hunger. And I'm, I'm driven by hunger for vision, hunger to stay out of um, the comfort zone, to stay out of mediocrity. And um, a couple of things that I do daily is I continue to learn. I continue to self-assess and search my heart and ask myself questions like, am I asking the right questions? Am I um, maintaining a teachable heart? Am I learning the right things? Am I implementing? And I do audits daily. And one of the things that I remember learning, um, it was probably um, a couple of years into our business, this concept of don't eat your seed. And, um, and so we're going to dive into this conversation today because it's not just about paying the price. It's about the benefits of of planting properly. And so imagine you have an apple seed and you have the option to either eat that seed, which then what happens if you eat the seed? You, there's no fruit, right? Because you're not planting it. It's not growing a tree. It's not bearing fruit. Or you can plant that seed into healthy soil and, and receive a harvest over time, right? And remember, it takes time for a seed to uh, germinate, to crack open, to grow, pop out of the soil, and then to actually start bearing fruit. So if you've been in a long journey, just realize that. Um, and even in the, the first year, you know, we, we bought a farm a couple of years ago and we planted an orchard. And um, the first year that we had fruit on our trees, we had to do the painful thing and cut the fruit off. It's called pruning, right? You know what pruning is. Um, and pruning happens for the betterment of growing deeper roots. Pruning happens in order for us to flourish more over time. And so um, there's no such thing as rushing the growth process. 
And this is something that I've kept in mind as I've been building our business now for 13 years. I've always, in the early days, I remember looking to the left and to the right and thinking, man, so-and-so is growing faster than I am. And I realized I asked God for a billion dollar idea. I'm building a bigger foundation. I want to have a larger harvest and I am going to always be submitting my agenda back to the Lord and saying, God, I'm here to multiply and steward what ultimately belongs to you. Uh, so everything that you're, so when you plant a seed instead of eat the seed and a seed could be your time and it can be your resources, your money, right? Um, and so when you plant the seed, there, there becomes a harvest. And oftentimes what, what people do is they, they put all of their money back into their business or all of their time back into business or family. Um, but ultimately we have to remember to take a portion of our harvest of our increase, and we need to be tithing and we need to be giving the Lord offerings. And when we don't tithe, we're actually eating the seed. And this is important because the seed is what protects. It does two things. It's like insurance. So it actually creates manifold growth. So the, remember the Bible says, test me in this one thing and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so large, you can't even handle it. So that tithing is, is an opportunity for us to multiply our, our seed. And if we're eating the seed and we're putting all of our money back into our business, or we're not tithing, um, then we're eating our seed. And then um, seed or, tithe, or sowing, also tithing, protects the blessing. And so it creates the blessing and it protects the blessing. And so if you've ever been fearful. I used to be so fearful about going backwards or what if I lose it all? You know, I watched family members go bankrupt and own businesses and work, you know, work so hard and never really get progress. And so part of, part of tithing is that God wants to, he wants to make, he says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. For my burden is easy and so my my yoke is easy and my burden is light and so when we're building businesses yes we are diligent but we're not working from a place of striving as believers we have a covenant of rest which does not mean we don't work rest means that we operate from a place of knowing we operate from a place of um, we're operating from not for we're not striving for growth we're not striving for success we're operating from this place of stewardship and when we honor the lord and worship with our increase and we give him the 10 percent, that is what ultimately already belongs to him and he multiplies it back to us and as we continue to take more and more seed and continue to keep sowing it we will have manifold growth and this is really the mystery of the kingdom we don't have to struggle. Uh, I'm not saying that there's not big problems we don't have to solve and that there's not a price to pay, but I'm talking about toil. We shouldn't have situations working against us. The Holy Spirit said that he would guide us into all truth. And so whenever we're up against the struggle, here's how I, here's how I overcome struggles now, is I ask the Holy Spirit to show me where I'm missing it. And he'll either drop a book title in my spirit and I'll start reading a book and I'm like, that's the answer I needed. Or he'll drop scripture and I'll be like, that's the answer I needed. Or he'll speak a word to me and I'll say, that's the answer I needed. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom, for divine direction. And and then I'll go be obedient. And so um, the beauty of collaborating and building with the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the key thing though, too, is that we're gr if we're grumbling and complaining, that will also rob us of our seed. Think about the Israelites in the desert with Moses and they wandered around. They wandered around the desert for 40 years and they were grumbling in their hearts and they were complaining against God or they were complaining against their situation. They were complaining against Moses. And I would warn you, do not complain and do not murmur in your hearts. Uh, take extreme ownership of your own success. Now, whatever that is, if, if you're 
if you're um, an employee, if you're a business owner, if you are running a household, if you're a wife at home or a mother at home and, and that is your main focus, whatever you're doing, if you're a business owner, do not grumble and complain uh, ever. That will potentially rob your seed. And so take extreme ownership and no more blaming anybody or anything for your lack of success or your lack of growth. Take extreme ownership, begin uh, planting your seeds. And right now, if, if you ha are starting at zero and you have nothing, take whatever's in your hand. If it's time is the resource that you have, then invest time. And then remember the offering on top of the tithe. Uh, generosity is how we continue to subdue the earth. It is how we continue to actually, you know, I think about wealth being in our hands and not in our hearts. You know, the Bible talks about uh, that money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And you know how we continue to maintain purity of heart towards wealth and keep our, our heart um, and our mindset pure is that we continue to release what God puts in our hands and let it flow out of our hands to build the kingdom. And when God knows that he can trust you to tithe, and when he knows he can entrust um, a little bit to you to build and advance his kingdom, watch out. There's no stopping that blessing from chasing after you. And uh, so tithing is a seed and it's the protection and the insurance as well. Um, and remember, life is self-determining. This is a quote by the man who wrote Man's Search for Meaning. I can't remember his name. I think it was Viktor Frankl, but I don't remember. Um, he said, life is self-determining. And this is 100% accurate. And you can see it all throughout scripture that God says, I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And something that I see in social selling that is is a, always a, a point of like, I'm, I'm constantly coaching our ladies through this as well, but I see this across the board is, you know, uh, people looking to the right or to the left and they're either comparing and they're saying, well, she's not doing this or my upline didn't do this for me or corporate's not doing such and such for me. And, and then they wait and they're waiting or they're saying, you know, my leader's not doing X, Y, Z, but I want to challenge you all again, no matter what industry you're in or whether you're at home to um, to step into leadership fully, whatever the struggle is, you know, it's the obstacle is the way. If you're complaining right now that maybe your upline isn't doing what you want them to do for you, then become the upline that does that for the team. And we have to be also part of not eating your seed is sowing into doing the necessary work in your business to continue to grow. And I see people get comfortable and what happens is that they end up going backwards and it's so much more difficult to build momentum back up. So our responsibility is to consistently be marketing, to be selling, to, to be developing ourselves, investing in ourselves, showing up, you know, paying the price. And another thing that's really key as well is that we are soil. And so we plant seeds into ourselves when we well, we learn when we grow, when we invest res when we invest resources into ourselves, and we take the time to to build ourselves up through mentorship, through you know build ourselves up in our most holy faith by getting in the Word. Remember, God will lead you into all truth. So I would encourage you. I'm going to wrap this up here. Not to eat your seed. If you are not tithing, then start today. Wherever it is that you're being fed, begin to sow. It's 10% of your increase. And, and it's the first fruits of your increase. So before you spend anything, you take whatever that profit is, um, however it is that you do your books, and you, you sow that. That's 10% back to the Lord. And then in addition, you give an offering. And that's worship. And that is really like, it's the, it's the audit. It's the heart check of... Am I willing? And also just being in a state of constantly sowing and you will begin to reap a harvest if you don't give up. And that is both spiritual, physical, in all areas, you will reap a harvest. And so 
Remember that tree that gets pruned. Remember the soil that you can plant yourselves in and continue to pay the price. Count the cost, pay the price, um, search your heart, stay teachable, and be diligent in working hard. And being a kingdom builder doesn't mean that we're not the hardest workers in the room. It means that we're the ones that aren't stressed. It means that we're in a constant attitude of praise and adoration. And we are not, um, we're the ones showcasing uh, what the best working, the best attitude, the excellence of, of heart and mind and spirit is. And so I want to admonish you that we have a different standard to live up to, a different standard than the world. And so let's showcase Jesus by being the, the hardest workers in the room, by being willing to pay the price, not only with time and energy and effort, but also with our resources. Um, give, give, what, give what rightfully belongs to the Lord, to the Lord, and don't eat your seed. If you plant that seed, see if there is not a window of heaven. <laughs> see if he doesn't open up windows of heaven that just pours out a blessing onto you so much that you can hardly even contain it, that you can't contain it. So um, be encouraged and um, I'll just keep on saying hello here from Vegas. <laughs> okay, so we want to hear from you. Leave us a comment, Give it, send me some feedback. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what's working and what topics you want me to cover more on. We get a lot of requests tons of requests in on business tips. And so I'm going to be covering business and health and wellness. We've got some really exciting topics coming down the pike for you. I'm just really excited about this transformation and um, so much more to come on all of this, but you've got what it takes. Remember, life is self-determining. You have what it takes and it doesn't take a special type of person to be successful. You just have to be willing to say yes, roll up your sleeves, be diligent, get to work, and then give to the Lord what rightfully belongs to him and then see if there isn't a um, manifold blessing that is poured out into you. Okay, click on the show notes and we will see you more on the inside. Thanks for listening to today's show. Hit subscribe or follow and be sure to share this episode with a friend.